we're going to be talking about the two process theory today. All right, well, let's go. <laughs> According to the two process theory, behavior is driven by two forces. The SR association between the context and the instrumental behavior, such as lever pressing, and the SS association between the context and the reward, something like sugar. We'll call this SS association the motivational force. Whoa, what about our own learning? Isn't that a thing? Well, the behaviorists do have some evidence on their side to back up a two-process theory. First of all, in outcome devaluation studies, animals continue to lever press a little bit during testing. If we give rats sugar, then make them sick, theoretically, they shouldn't want the sugar anymore. If they are in charge of whether or not they get the sugar, for instance, by lever pressing, why would they continue to perform a behavior that will give them something they don't want? What can account for this? A weird obsession with lever pressing? Unbridled masochism? Or could it be that there's a reflexive component to behavior? There is a second line of evidence in which it is a known fact that Pavlovian learning can affect instrumental learning. This phenomenon is aptly named Pavlovian Instrumental Transfer, or PIT. For example, consider the following scenario. A sample of rats were trained to bar press for water. The water was delivered directly through an oral fistula so that they didn't have to perform the action of drinking themselves. Researchers found that when the animals bar pressed, they would begin to lick an unconditioned response to water that was unnecessary for them to actually get or drink the water. This study demonstrates the Pavlovian process and instrumental processes are often intertwined and exert influence over each other. Not only can Pavlovian responses affect instrumental behavior, but some automatic Pavlovian responses can be governed voluntarily under some circumstances. In other words, one can voluntarily engage in instrumental behavior for the express purpose of modulating a system that is usually only engaged by Pavlovian associations. For example, some researchers have been able to train their subjects to modulate their galvanic skin response, while others have trained their subjects to vasodilate, which increases blood flow, thus facilitating an escape response. The animals who were trained to do this modulated these responses by engaging in instrumental behavior. So here's a recap. Two process theory predicts that behavior is caused by two underlying processes, an instrumental SR association between the context and the instrumental behavior, and a Pavlovian SS association between the context and the reward. In other words, a motivation association. These two associations operate independently of each other. Two process theory is backed by a couple of intriguing phenomena, which include continued instrumental behavior after outcome devaluation and Pavlovian instrumental transfer. So, is there any weight to all of this? Well, if the two process theory is correct, we should see certain behavioral changes if we manipulate these proposed associations. Sounds like we need a test. Here's the setup. If the animals press the left lever, they'll get sugar. If they press the right lever, they'll get pellets. So far, so good. Now, recall that the SS association between the context and the reward is what we might call a motivational force. In other words, the pellets and the sugar combine in the animal's mind to represent a big glob of shiny, tasty motivation. It is the motivational holy grail. Now remember, this motivational nebulous of food and sweet, sweet sugar only represents a part of the animal's behavior. The other half is the context lever press association. However, these two processes, the SS and the SR, are each of their own isolated force, which combine to produce observable behavior. Keep that in mind. Now on to the manipulation. For the next hour, we're going to give our animals as much sugar as they'd like. This is called stimulus-specific satiety, and afterwards, the sight of sugar will make our rats want to puke their little rodent brains out. Or it would, if rats could puke. In 
In other words, we've just devalued one of our outcomes, sugar. Because sugar is part of that big motivational glob we talked about, the rat's motivation to liver press has just decreased. The SS association has been weakened. However, the SR association, the one that drives the right and left liver pressing, is totally intact. Remember, the SS and SR associations are independent of each other. So although their general motivation is down, the rats haven't learned that left lever is less desirable than the right. If two process theory is right, the rats should decrease their liver pressing in general, but they won't show any preference for one lever or the other. So what do we find? Bad news to process theory, the rats dramatically decrease their left lever pressing, the lever that is associated with sugar. Seems like the animals know the outcome of their behavior, like RO learning would suggest. But wait! The behaviorists aren't giving up that easily. There may still be some hope for the two-process theory. What if each side of the environment the rats are in are a separate context? In context A, we have our left lever and the outcome of sugar. In context B, we have the right lever and the outcome pellets. Now, these results are magically consistent. Each context has its own SR and SS association. It seems as though the two process has finally bested us, unless we design a situation where a simple context provides two outcomes. Let's say we have an apparatus with a lever that produces sugar when the lever is pressed to the left and pellets when it is pressed to the right. Again, we're going to devalue the sugar. The two process theory predicts that, because the lever is only one context, the devaluation will produce the same effect predicted before. That a general decrease in motivation will produce a reduction in lever pressing in general, but without preference for the right or left. However, it seems as though this was the final nail on the two process coffin. The rats selectively decreased their left lever pressing, preferring to receive the pellets over the sugar. cry. We haven't even talked about the brain. The two process theory suggests that Pavlovian instrumental transfer and outcome devaluation are two effects of the same underlying process. This means that if they are in the same process, they should be controlled by a single brain region. The nucleus accumbens is a part of the striatum in the basal ganglia. This area plays an important role in reward, pleasure, and addiction, among other things. The nucleus accumbens is composed of two regions, the core and the shell, each of which can be lesioned selectively. If two process theory is correct, both Pavlovian instrumental transfer and outcome devaluation should be controlled by the same region of the nucleus accumbens, the core or the shell. However, if the core is lesioned, an animal can no longer learn about outcome devaluation. If you give a rat with core lesions sugar and lithium chloride, they will still press a lever to get it, even though it made them sick. On the other hand, if the shell is lesioned, specific transfer will not be observed. From these neurobiological studies, it has been demonstrated that PIT and outcome devaluation can be selectively manipulated. In other words, they are not controlled by the same underlying process as two process theory would have you believe. Sorry, behaviorists. Looks like animals know the consequences of their actions after all. Myth busted. BAM! <laughs> Chloe! They're so Chloe. cute. And this is what's known as a rat escape response. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's some vasodilation going on in there. Come here. She's like, no, 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 I want to type. <laughs> She's gonna start a blog. Oh, You're so funny. Alright, I'm gonna stop recording. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Bye, Chloe. See you later.